Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today I have another brand new product for you that you're going to love. So today we have sublimation ink in a couple different forms. We have it in stamp pads for stamping. If you have stamps for crafting, you're going to love this. But I have a few other ways for you to use it as well, so stay tuned even if you don't own any stamps at all. And then they have sublimation ink stamp refills. So these refills are designed to refill the stamp pad when your ink runs low, but you can use the refill itself for craft projects as well. So I've been experimenting with tons of different options for both of these new products. From traditional stamping, if you have rubber stamps, you have cling stamps, you have any type of craft stamp at all you can stamp something and add it to a sublimation blank. Now that means that you can get the kids involved with stamping, right? The only drawback to this is if you have stamps with words on them, they wouldn't work. So the sublimation print itself does still need to be mirrored. So any writing would need to be mirrored. So don't use those stamps that maybe have writing on them, but otherwise, I really think you're gonna love this product. Then, I was experimenting with tons of different options with these that require no stamps at all. And I really think you are going to love the projects that I came up with because I love them myself. So let's dive in and let's take a look at the product first and then let's make a few projects. So here's the entire line of Artist Breeze sublimation ink pads and their ink refills. So I'm gonna be using both of these in this video and I'm gonna use the refills, not just as refills for the ink pad, but also for projects themselves. So the sublimation stamp pads themselves are literally just a stamp pad. So they have sublimation ink and it comes in nine colors. So red, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, black. Now you may notice that the ink itself is not as, let's say, blue as you imagined it when you stamp it, but it will be really vibrant after you press it just like any sublimation ink. The refills come in the same colors and they come in these small boxes. When you open the box, you'll have a small bottle with a lid. And we are gonna be using this as ink for projects, not just to refill the stamp pads. So normally what you would use this for is if your stamp pad ran out of ink, you would get one of these refills, add a few drops to re-ink the pad itself. But you can also use these bottles for projects. So let's jump into a few techniques with both the stamp pads as well as the refill ink bottles. Now that you've taken a look at the sublimation ink stamp pads and the refills, I do want to mention a little bit about the blanks you're going to use. So you do still need sublimation blanks. So sublimation needs polyester to react and it doesn't matter what form the ink is in, it still needs that polyester to react with it. So you're going to need polyester fabric, at least 65%, or some kind of blank that has a polyester coating. So for instance, I'm gonna do a mug, but this is a sublimation mug, which has a sublimation coating on the outside to react with that ink. And you will notice that all my blanks are white or light colored. Why is that? Because sublimation ink in all forms, including this form, is translucent. So if you were to stamp it on a blank that has color, that color would show through the sublimation ink. So always be aware of that when picking the blanks that you're gonna sublimate on. So I'm gonna use this to sublimate a mug. So I've drawn a rectangle just with pencil on regular copy paper. And I'm just using these lines as a guide for where to keep my stamping inside in order to fit on my mug. Now I always flip my copy paper over to the back. Make sure it says it's okay for use in laser printers just so it can withstand the heat of sublimation. And then I just have some clean stamps and I've added one of those to just a clear acrylic block. And I'm just gonna start stamping and I'm gonna make a butterfly mug and I have a variety of butterfly stamps here. And after each stamp, I'm just gonna kind of clean the stamp off, dry it, and then go to my next color and just try to just randomly add butterflies to this print. So I'm gonna do this all over this paper. And I have a wide variety of butterfly stamps, so I'll just change those out to different butterflies as well as I go. So I'm just gonna continue, stamp all over this paper. Then we'll take a look at some more techniques before we sublimate this. So there's my completed mug wrap. 
I'm gonna set this aside, allow it to dry a little bit. If you don't have time to allow it to dry, then you could hover your heat press over it or use a hair dryer. Make sure all the ink is dry before you press. So let's look at another technique with the stamp pads. So these are just foam pouncer brushes. And I'm gonna load up the brush on the ink pad and then just kind of run it over my paper. This makes a really cool effect by itself or we can use this as a background. So first of all, let's just rub one color or we could go over here and we can add another color. So we'll do pink all over this area and then add some purple. So you can get some really cool effects with just the ink and some stencil brushes. And then we could allow this to dry and use this alone as our sublimation print, or we can combine the two techniques. So here I have a background of pink and purple. Then I just grab my black ink pad and this really large background stamp. Now this could be any stamp you would like, but I love these large backgrounds for things like coasters. So I'm just going to load up this whole stamp, hopefully, and I'm gonna press it right over where I made a background on this paper. So I'll just press it right over the top. And now we have a really cool polka dotted effect that I could use as a sublimation print. So a way to combine the two techniques. So I'm gonna press some using this technique by itself and some using this technique so you can see how both will look on a sublimation project. I did also wanna note that this is water cleanup so you can use water to clean your brushes as well as your stamps. So I did promise you a project with just these ink refills. This one especially, it will definitely bleed through. So all I'm gonna do is add drops of this refill ink onto this paper and just blow it with the air. So you can create some really awesome effects with this technique and I'm gonna use blue and yellow And you can even see it start to blend and maybe make some green. So you can do this all over your paper, however you would like for whatever blanks you would like to do. So I'm just gonna do, and you can do them at the same time. So I'm gonna do blue and yellow together. You can do them at different times. Pick the paper up, sort of tilt it. It just creates some really amazing effects. Now with this one, you are gonna have to let it dry probably overnight. I did do one where I hovered my heat press over it for several minutes, so just hold the heat press two inches, three inches above it, and let it sit under that heat press. And I let it sit for a couple minutes and I did press it right away and it did work. So you could do that method. So let's take a look at a few things I made with this method and talk about a second method that's a bit messier. So here's a sheet with that method that's already dry and this one was pink and purple and I'm actually gonna press this to a mouse pad and see how it looks. So I just love the way everything blends together. And then the second thing I did was drip the ink and as it was dripping from the bottle, sprayed it with the canned air. It goes everywhere. I would recommend doing this outside, in a box, whatever, but I have several sheets of this because it literally splattered everywhere. So I have all kinds of sheets to play with. <laughs> have allowed all of these to dry. So we may add some of these to blanks as well just to see how the effect looks. So now we have our sublimation prints, we have our sublimation blanks. Let's take a look at how to prepare those for pressing. So I'm gonna prep one of these blanks on camera and then I'm gonna prep the rest and press them off camera. So to prep these, so I'm just gonna do these coasters and this was the technique where I used the small paint brushes and went over the paper. And to prep these, I'm just gonna lint roll the blanks. You just wanna make sure the blank is clean regardless of the blank you're using. And then we'll just put, the, in this case, the coaster onto the paper. And I'm just gonna cut roughly around here. And then with the coaster on the paper, over the area of the design I want, I'm just gonna tape it into place. So it is important to tape it down 
well. Make sure it's not gonna move. And then with these, you're not gonna know most of these techniques where the ink is and where it's not. So you are definitely gonna wanna use some type of protective paper. I will link to all the supplies I'm using in the description below. On computer, click show more. On mobile, click the arrow to expand the description or swipe up on the video. So for each of these blanks, I'm gonna put protective paper on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna press it with the sublimation print side up. And for my time, temperature, and pressure, I'm gonna look where I purchased the blank and get a time, temperature, and pressure. I do have a full video about finding the correct time, temperature, and pressure for sublimation, and I will link to that in the description below. So now I'm gonna prep each of my blanks and press them, and we'll come back and look at the results. So here's a quick look at all the projects I made. I love how every single one of them turned out. So let's take a closer look at each one of these, and I'll talk about what technique I use for each one. First up is this mug you saw me make with the stamps. So you can see how bright the blues got and everything really pops now on the mug. It turned out amazing. So just with some stamps and the stamping pad, you can be sublimating, no printer required. Next up was that technique of taking the stamp pads and swirling the ink with a pouncer brush onto the paper. So here's a couple different versions of that. This is a great way to like get the kids involved. It does not matter what they do with the ink. It will turn out amazing once you press it. Then if you wanna take that technique one step further, stamp over the top with a stamp, and you can see the gorgeous background that I did with the pouncer brush method, and then the stamp on top makes it really amazing. So these are car coasters, which is a fun sublimation blank to try. So these are ceramic. The other coasters I did were a hard board, and then the mug, of course, is ceramic. So several different versions to show you this can work on any sublimation blank. Next up was that technique of splattering the refill with just the canned air. Press this one to a mouse pad and love the way it turned out. So this is the pink and purple one that I allowed to dry overnight. But I also, the one I made on camera, I hovered it under my heat press for about 30 seconds and let me show you what I made. I love the way this one turned out. So it's super easy method, fun to play around with, and it makes some gorgeous sublimation crafts. I couldn't stop with that method and had to continue and I put it on a steel bottle opener. So this makes a great gift idea and it only took me a few minutes to spray that ink around on a piece of paper. Then finally I did some metal magnets with that last technique which I said was super messy but the results are so cool. So I may in fact be doing this one again because I really love the results. So these are a white metal magnet. So this goes to show that these products can be used on just about any sublimation blank material that you might find. So I talked about that protective paper being important and I wanted to show you a few of these after the pressing was complete. There is tons of ink on this paper. This ink can get on your heat press, it can get on any heat press mat you're using. So be sure to use protective paper on the top and bottom all the time, but definitely when you're dealing with something like this where the ink can be all over the paper. I was gonna mention, so when I splatter this ink on the paper, the ink is really thick. So I'm using quite a bit of ink to do this method. So I press this one using this paper and you can see there's still tons of ink left, even though I got one press out of it. I would probably try to press this a second or maybe even a third time. It may be lighter each time, but I think the effect would be really cool and it's a way to stretch your ink even further. So you might try pressing a second time on a scrap piece of polyester to see what would happen and use these prints a few different times when you use this particular method. So as you saw, I had tons of fun coming up with techniques for both of these products. That turned into amazing sublimation crafts. So if you don't have a sublimation printer, and you wanna start sublimation crafting, you might pick up these sublimation stamp ink pads or the ink refills and get started with the techniques that I showed you. But even if you have a sublimation printer, perhaps you just wanna play around, get artistic, get those stamps out that maybe you have in your craft stash and haven't used in a while, this product is also for you. Now, if you want another way to use sublimation ink and you haven't seen it, I have another video that is about sublimation paint from Artist Brie as well. I will link to that in the description below so you can head there for another option for your sublimation crafting. Now, if you have any questions about this video, sublimation stamp ink pads, sublimation stamp refills, please ask those in the comment section below. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.